Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tessa. So glad you are all here this morning. Pastor Rebecca is currently on vacation. Ooh, much needed vacation. We're always happy to have her gone to go ahead and rest and rejuvenate and come back refreshed. Right? She's gone, but she'll be coming back. That's right. Um, a few announcements this morning. Um, thank you for your compassion. We received a total of $908 per week of compassion so far. That's really awesome. So remember, we are um, collecting it for up to $300. Um, anything more than $300 was going to go for earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria. So $600 of that is going for that relief because we know that was devastating and there was another earthquake afterwards. And so um, really thank you all for, for the work and, the, and your gifts that you provided. Um, if you want to donate more, if you want to learn more about what Week of Compassion is doing in those areas and just throughout the year, you can go to weekofcompassion.org, which is in your bulletin as well. Um, adult Bible study uh, started this morning with Julie kicking us off. We'll have that recording in the Sunday email, but if you would like to join us the next uh, few weeks, we're going to look at scriptures that address relations between church folks and those outside the church. You can join us um, in Bailey Hall or on Zoom at 9 a.m. Um, we'd love to have you there. Um, again, Pastor Rebecca is currently on vacation. Please feel free to reach out to me or any of your elders during the next few weeks if there are any uh, pastoral emergencies. All right, are there any birthdays or anniversaries from now until Saturday? I didn't write any down, but is anyone in the room who isn't shy? <laughs> All right, it looks like we, no one, okay. We'll move on to our gathering song then. Please stand as you are able as we sing our gathering song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs> Abundance of abundant grace 
and in return asks us to share that grace with others. Jesus' ministry included helping people feel seen and reminding them that to God they are enough. Through the example of Jesus Christ and the help of the Holy Spirit, we have everything we need to share God's blessing. Let us worship the living God with humble thanksgiving and joy. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God of all, we give you thanks for this new day and for this chance to come together as beloved community. We pray for open hearts and minds as we worship together as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Walking into this sanctuary is a great feeling for me, and it's kind of like this blue hymnal. Opening this hymnal is like coming home. There are so many reminders of the Christian faith and of our lives here in this hymnal, at least for me. And what you find when other people start opening it up is probably for you too. We're gonna provide our version of a hymn from the from the hymnal, It Is Well With My Soul. It's one of those hymns that's just beautiful. Everyone loves the tune, and it's so powerful in terms of the experience a lot of us have with our Christian family and with the experiences we have in the real world and with the story that touches our heart. It is well written back in the 1800s by Horatio Spafford. And you know, we canceled our Ash Wednesday service this year. And the reasons were complex, kind of like what hymns try to deal with, complex things. We had a break in. Before that, we had lost unexpectedly a church member, Lace. And Maybe more expectedly, more, oh, I can understand that. We've lost Gene. And all these kind of traumatic things are happening. The hymn we're going to sing for you is kind of like that, in that Horatio Spafford wrote this when he was going through huge traumas as well. And I'll spare you all the details of the story, except to say that he'd been he did really well in Chicago and lost a lot in that Chicago fire and he had to send his family on to England and at sea, the ship went down. His four daughters were lost. His wife sent the telegram that said, alone, saved, but what do you do? And I don't know what you do exactly. You just grieve and grieve and grieve and there are seasons for grieving and there are seasons to also think, well, what have I done already? What were the connections I've already made? What are the blessings that I've already received? And for those, we look through times of trouble and say, it is well. And then this morning, I guess Cheryl saw that we were gonna sing this song today. And she reminded me, when her mother was between treatments back in Pennsylvania and come out for a visit, this was one of the hymns we sang. In fact, I think we sang it as a choral piece. <laughs> it is well. This song is so beautiful. Mary's gonna take the high part. Yeah, what are they called? The, the Sopranos. <laughs> Karen's there on alto. I'm trying with the tenor, and we got the dead ringer in here. Jim's gonna be doing the bass part. <laughs> And then, of course, we got Deborah playing the piano, and I don't know, there's the music that's in the hymnal. Deborah, whatever, she'll do whatever key you want. I mean, what a <laughs> gift. So, uh, however we put, put it out, this is a, a hymn that's a shared hymn by the people of the church. It speaks to me, I hope it speaks to you, and what if, even if it doesn't, it is well. <laughs> Here we go.
Um, prayers for Al um, that they can figure out what's going on with his shoulder, hopefully um, not fractured or anything, but he is in a lot of pain. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. But with that also comes a wonderful joy. It was his first game, and they won. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the blessings in between. We got our joyful hearts. We give you thanks. Um, we're praying for Brenda. She had um, blood work done last week and an infusion done. Feeling very tired this morning. Um, so glad she could make it on Zoom with us. Um, uh, and also, she did have an MRI scheduled for Sunday, but that had to be rescheduled due to some insurance issues. So just prayers for Brenda this morning that she can get the rest that she needs. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Um, we are giving thanks because Mandy Doring had my cast removed from a foot, which is really awesome. God, with wonderful hearts, we give you thanks. Um, but now we're hoping that that foot, it's still a little sore at times, so hoping that that strength will come back and that soreness slowly starts to dissipate with time. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. prayer. Um, we continue to pray for those um, dealing with the winter storms all across the country. There are people who have been trapped recently in their homes or trying to figure out um, how to move forward with the unexpected storms that were happening and the effects of that. So, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, continued prayers for those um, struggling to recover from the multiple earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Our global ministry's prayer partner this coming week is Jordan. And our Pacific Southwest Regional Prayer Partner this week is Beloved of San Diego, where uh, Dale Suggs serves as the pastor. We give thanks to God for all of our partners in ministry locally and beyond. Is there anything else we can uplift this morning in prayer? For uh, praying for Lois, my friend, uh, she was telling me how she came to overdone, and so she was a little too tired. She'd like to be here in church this morning, so just prayers for her and her health issues. Yes, prayers for Lois Byford and health issues. May she also get the rest that she needs. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Let us continue in prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your peace and the comfort that only you can provide. We praise you and thank you this morning as the one who has provided and guided us, who sees our needs, who provides us with community and companionship, who gives us gifts like reminders of your son ministry, how he viewed people as beloved, as important, as your children. We pray continually for your justice in this world, in all forms, and in all ways that bring life, healing, and wholeness. We uplift those struggling with illness that weighs physically, emotionally, and mentally we pray for people dealing with violence at the hands of governments and systems, and even those close to them. We pray for those who are made to feel less than human because of their identities by people that can't forget but know that they are made in your image, God. We pray that in all these areas, the people of God are working towards justice, to bring comfort and serve those in need of care and of doing the necessary work, not only in our hearts, but in the world for change. Remind us that church is beyond a Sunday morning service. May we be filled with strength and renewal this day, refreshed to do the work you have called us. May our cups be filled with hope, 
especially when it is difficult to hope. We are those who have been sent out into the world. Let our light and love shine. Be examples of the loving one, the holy one, the just one, in our speech and in our conduct. In the powerful name of Jesus, for all this we pray. reading our first scripture from the Psalms. It's Psalms 121 and it's on page 571 in the Bible by your chair. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. From this time on, forevermore. And he had blessings to the scripture. Our second reading today is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 8 through 14. You can find it on page 108 in the New Testament section of the Red Bible in the chair racks, if you'd like to follow along. Philip said to him, Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. May the Holy Spirit add blessing to this reading of the Gospel. Will you pray with me and for me as we jump into the Word this morning? Holy God, bless the speaking and the hearing of these words, that through the Incarnation we may know that we are your beloved, good and enough. In Jesus' name. Some of my favorite stories within the Gospels are the ones where the humanity of the disciples comes out. They feel so relatable, and though Jesus sounds a little sassy in many of his responses, I believe that Jesus wants to make known to the disciples that their limitations won't get in the way of what God is doing. We don't know much about what the disciples thought about being called by Jesus, but I imagine that they probably felt an immense amount of pressure. Many left professions to follow Jesus, and then they spent most of their time with him running away and trying to understand what he was teaching. The text show the mystery, the mysterious and confusing ways Jesus talks. There is this reason there is the idea of the messianic secret in the Gospel of Mark. He literally tells them to keep his secret and identity, uh, his identity a secret. And then there are other times where Jesus explicitly tells them, I'm explaining this to you because you are my disciples. Even though it was confusing to other people, we'll hopefully get it one day. As I mentioned, 
mention, we don't have enough commentary about when they were first called with Jesus. Did they struggle with imposter syndrome? Did they worry that they potentially didn't know the scriptures as well as they should? Did they feel like they were enough to be Jesus' disciples? We know more about their struggles in the book, in the book of Acts, but the Gospels mostly give us glimpses of their glaring humanity and shortcomings. And I skipped quite ahead with a passage in John on the second Sunday in Lent, but it helps us understand the incarnation, Jesus's ministry, and our role in all of it. The previous verses in this passage of John that I read are Jesus's declaration that he is the way, the truth, and the life and that no one goes to the Father except through him. Jesus wanted to provide clarity and comfort to his disciples before he was to depart. How does all of what Jesus has done, the person they have followed, now inform how they were to view God? As one commentary I read said, how humanity's relationship to God and God's relationship to humanity had now been decisively altered. The incarnation brings the tangible presence of God's love to the world. The incarnation has changed everything. Jesus makes this huge declaration, and then Philip goes, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. <laughs> and I understand. I understand why he has this question, why he has this request, and I'm so thankful for the Phillips in this world. They are the people in the classroom who ask the question that the rest of us are afraid to ask. Again, you can't imagine Jesus may have had some options uh, to how he wanted to respond. At this point, they had spent many years with Jesus and were still asking these types of questions. Jesus may have sighed, closed his eyes, and rubbed his forehead, just wondering how he was going to respond this time. Maybe he responded quietly and slowly as to intentionally have them lean in and hear what he had to say. He could have grabbed Philip by the shoulders and shaken him while responding. How many times have I told you this? Or he may have wrapped his arm around him and began explaining again the best he could to, the, to Philip and the disciples. But what is underlying to Philip's request, to his question here? He feels he knows almost enough to go out and do what Jesus has asked. It is this beautiful acknowledgement and worry of Philip's human limitations. He's saying, I do not feel enough to do what you have done, Jesus, not without you here. Jesus then explains that everything he has done was God's work. Not his own. Though you think you have almost enough by believing and following and knowing me, Jesus, you know God. You have everything you need. The word believe occurs three times in verses 10 through 11. And the repetition of this verb shifts the focus from Jesus' revelation of God to the disciples' acceptance of says one commentary that I read. Then Jesus goes on to say something that should cause you to pause and wonder. John chapter 14, verse 12 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do it even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. God through Jesus is saying that our humanity is not a threat or not enough, but it is something that God has created. It is something that God loves and something that God can redeem. In believing in Jesus, we know that there is a need for redemption, for salvation, because we won't always get it right and we will ask the same questions over and over again. There is this newness that God will bring that has that God has brought already through Jesus to show you that for 
bringing all of who you are, even your humanity, God will use for good. And will use it in ways that you could have never imagined. And they will be even greater than what Jesus did. As one commentary I read notes, the work of the disciples and those after will not be greater because of anything intrinsic to the disciples themselves, but because they belong to the new eschatological age ushered in Jesus' hour. They will continue to glorify God through Jesus, and that was the purpose of Jesus' own works. Though the disciples feel almost enough, Jesus reminds them that they are enough that they have been called by God, and that is enough. Jesus' life, ministry, death, and ultimate resurrection is the ultimate example of God's all-sufficient grace. Through the incarnation, we are enough. Psalm 121 is a song of ascent, a song used during a processional or on a journey. The psalm is believed to be originally a prayer or profession of a warrior going to battle and it was repurposed to be reread as a pilgrimage psalm, as I mentioned on a journey, typically to Jerusalem or a holy place. When I think of the psalms, I imagine that this one in particular is well known by Jesus. He moved around, he traveled often, sometimes running away from those who wished to cause him harm. So I assume this psalm in particular hits close to, hits close to home for him, it is a, as it is a deep reminder that God will take care of God's children. It is a reminder that we don't have to lean on our own strength, when we don't feel enough, when we don't feel like we can keep going, God has said, I have you. God has said, I will be your protector, I will take care of you, and there is nothing that you need to do in order to receive this protection. Another commentary I read noted, quote, Psalm 121 affirms that the sovereign ruler of the cosmos has a personal concern for the lives of all God's people. So I would say that from this time on, as it ends the psalm is not limited to when it was first written, nor to this present moment when we read it out loud. This declaration goes further back, and we can pinpoint to the moment after creation has been shaped and formed by God. Looking at creation, God says it is good. There are no prerequisites. There are no tests of endurance. There are no pop quizzes. God says yes. This is good. I would argue that since our inception, God has said and made it known that we are enough, that we are worth protecting and deserving of love and grace, each and every one of us. God has said, let it be known extremely clear that through my son, through Jesus Christ, through the incarnation, let there be no further questions or concerns, and if there is ever a doubt among you, your community should be there to remind you of these truths. And that, my friends, is good news. Amen. It is at this time that we are all invited, if you desire tonight with this congregation, by that first confession of faith or transfer of membership, you are welcome to do so. It is at this time that we are all invited to rededicate our hearts and our lives to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Will you please stand as you are able as we sing our hymn of response, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, number 585.
service today. It could almost be the theme for offering every week. We become uncertain if our gift will make a difference. We come hoping that God will stretch the rest of our budget. We come offering of ourselves, hoping it's enough. In our gospel reading today, Jesus assures us he is enough. Being with Jesus is the same as being with God. Believing in Jesus takes us down a path where our whole lives are changed, including our minds and mindset. We come every week and Jesus meets us here, telling us our gifts will be multiplied, our budget sufficient, our offerings are enough. We are not almost enough when we are with Jesus. We are enough. Every gift is worthy and pleasing to God. There is no wondering. We are enough. So come today. Offer your tithes, talents, and offerings, and dwell with the one who says, you are enough. Will the deacons please receive our offering?
something a little differently. I believe Pastor Rebecca shared it last week that during Lent we move the passing of the peace to before this moment, before the meal. We've taken a moment of silence to quiet our hearts and our minds in reflection. Silence can be so important. In the psalm we read today, I wonder, after the question, I look to the hills, where does my help come from? There's silence in between that. There's this thought process, there's this mulling over, there's looking at the history, there's where am I currently in life? How has God provided? How has God's promises come to fruition? To get to the point to say, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Those silence, those pauses, those moments of reflection are so important in our life when things are hard. When we don't feel like enough, we don't have the words to say, we look to one another. We look to Christ who has said, I am enough. My grace is enough. It is sufficient for you. And because that journey can sometimes feel long and hard, God has said, I will also provide for you the bread and the cup. He prepares the disciples for the journey they're about to take. It will be a rough one. He says, takes up the bread, and he blesses it, and he breaks it, and he gives it to his disciples, saying, take, eat of it, all of you, and remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took up the cup, and after poured it out, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for many, the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Father, we desire to sup with you, even if it's just in a symbolic way. Lead us to follow you. Help us to do your will and your ways. Guide us as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Amen.
them to partake. No prerequisites, no exam entrances. You are all welcome to partake in this meal. Let me share a little bit about how we will do this. Our deacons will um, dismiss you from the aisle and you will come up and take one of the cups from the baskets and take it back to your seat waste baskets on this side from this to this door and the entrance door where you can lay your waste. Again, you are enough and you are welcome. Christ has welcomed you.
has called you. God believes you are enough. You are enough to do all the things God has created you for. All the gifts and the talents are already within you. Go and spread that unwavering, that unquenching grace of God to everyone you meet. Go in grace.